ignorance is bliss. Because the locus of control in Africa is external, we always want to ascribe any negative thing to an external forces. It's like knowing that a car will get you from point A to point B, but not knowing how to drive the car. So what next? One of our biggest issues is infrastructure. If you have a proper infrastructure in a place, it will help guide the economy, it will help guide the city. The infrastructure of any particular place is what makes it run. And it's like the utilities or services of that city. And it involves such things as um, power, uh, transportation, urban security, waste management, energy, and other social aspects of uh, infrastructure, schools, airports, monorails, ability to move people from where they are to where they want to go. So when we talk about AI and we talk about smart cities, ability of the cities to be able to get with the new technology, you'll be able to tell, tell the time, you'll, you'll be able to so, do so much in order to be contemporary and be at par with contemporary or contemporaries all over the world. It's very important first to understand the effect of adequate infrastructure and how that can impact on the economy. If, for instance, you want to do an interview and a person's car breaks down, they will not be able to do the interview. You waste money, you waste time, you waste resources. And any wastage that you lose, you're not likely to get it back. Uh, so it's not, it's something that one needs to understand. It has to do with being able to move to the next level technology-wise and in the light of where everyone is going and in the light of sustainability, managing the scarce resources we have to be able to effectively take care of quite a larger number of people. Abuse is inevitable if you do not understand what something is meant for. In the northern part of the country, we are seeing what we call desert encroachment. And looking at that, we tie that one to the green, great, uh, great green world, which is something that is a conversation now. When I say green, green that means people are no more planting trees. So, uh, and when you look at the, uh, the, the eastern part of the country, we see the issue of oil spillage, gas flaring. So you can see there is a lot of impact. A lot of people cannot plant, they cannot feed them. So agriculture is a big problem on that side. And when you look at our own side here, in the southern part, you see a little of sea level rise and flooding, and which is very, very, uh, is, a, is an impact of climate change on us. So those are the effects, and those are the things that we need to start looking at as people, citizens, and government. There are many, many things that we as human beings use how effectively we use those things and how sustainably we use them in such a manner that the generations yet unborn need to find them and use them. I mean, when you listen, you hear that certain things, certain animals have gone extinct. Climate change is a time bomb. And if we don't take urgent action, it's going to affect a lot of generations. Three in 10 Nigerians suffer from mental health issues, according to the country's Ministry of Health. When certain things happen to you when it comes to environmental issues, it actually affects your mental health. The mental health situation in the country, it's not as good as it should be. If you look at the indices going on currently in Nigeria, you will realize that there is tendency for there to be a spike in mental health issues and challenges in Nigeria. Uh, globally, uh, the statistic, mental health statistic globally, I think it is put between 12 and 20%. Nigerian statistics is put between 20 and 30%. Anything can be a trigger for mental ill health. Job loss can be a trigger. Uh, issue of fire disaster can be a trigger. Issue of flood can be a trigger. 
anything can trigger it. Research has shown that in an environment where you have high level of poverty, there is tendency for there to be an increase in the incident of mental ill health. A new report shows that 94 million people live in extreme poverty, with the country ranked as the poverty capital of the world. And the issue of COVID-19 came in, and in the course of it, over 30% of people lost their job. They belong to a family, and from that family where they came from, it shows that they are not able to take care of, meet the responsibility that ordinarily they should be able to meet as a result of maintaining a job. Now that they have lost their job, they can't meet it again. Then, for those who were lucky not to have lost their job, the issue of inflation has also made their position precarious because the money they were earning before that was enough for the family is no longer enough to take care of the same family because of the issue of inflation. And as a result of that, it will affect their standard of living. It will affect uh, their, uh, the family dynamics such that it will lead to conflict and all that thing. And if you look at it generally, Maslow hierarchy of need made us to understand something. At the basic level, the lowest level of the hierarchy of need, that's motiv what motivates us as human beings to do what we do. At the lowest, at the basis, the lowest level is physiological need. The next one is uh, safety needs, the security need. The third one is uh, uh, love and belongingness. Now, the fourth one is extreme, while the last one the, at the peak of the pyramid is self actualization. Somebody, COVID 19 came in and took love and belongingness away from us in form of social distancing. We can no longer gather to celebrate, we can no longer, you know, it took longer, uh, was it? Uh, love and belongingness away from us in form of social distance and face masks and all that. Then, uh, with the inflation. Inflation took away people's economic power, such that majority of them are now having problems with the issue of security, with the issue of uh, uh, safety. Many people have to change their accommodation because they can no longer afford where they used to live now. They relocate to a lower level of accommodation. And some other people, where you see the husband and the wife, losing their job at the same time, physiological need becomes a problem for them feeding their family, clothing their family, and being able to keep warm and other becomes a problem. So, and when you see all these things, the way they are coming, you will know that definitely there is a relationship between all of them. And because they could not, they lost their job because of the inflation, because of the uh, very bad economic situation we found ourselves in Nigeria, there is tendency for there to be increase in the number of, in the incidence of mental ill health in Nigeria. Everybody should be concerned with mental health issue. Whether you are gen, I don't know what you call it now, but I know the millennial generation, whether you belong to the millennial generation or belong to the older generation, everybody must be concerned about mental health because it has the tendency to deprive one from achieving his potential. For those who are already matured, they have they've spent their life. For those, this genera millennial generation, they are just coming up. And if they are not conscious of uh, uh, concern about mental health issue, it might deprive them from contributing their own quota to the global economy. If you also check employability, uh, rate of em employability, uh, skill and benefit, it is this mental health challenge that also have the highest level of uh, un unemployability. People only wait until, th until things are really bad, that's when they come to get help. And it's the same thing I see in therapy. It's when people are really sick, like when it gets to the point where um, they're not able to function, go to work, relationships are falling apart, they can't sleep, they can't eat, like they're falling apart and they're now suicidal. That's when they now decide, okay, I need help. I need to reach out to somebody to not help me. Meanwhile, it could have been curbed before. The mental health culture, if the health culture in Nigeria is to avoid health care rather than to walk towards it. So even when we offer people free mental health services, 
they would not show up as readily as you think they would because coming for mental health treatment means you have to confront yourself. Treatments are available, services are available, and uh, they are easily accessible, and I think they are affordable. Uh, so Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital, Yaba, in Lagos, Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital, Aro, Abe Okuta, Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital, Usenu Bini City, Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital, Calabar in Cross River, Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital, Enugu in Enugu Town, Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital, um, Kawe in Sokoto, Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital, Banawa in Kaduna, Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital, Baga Road in Maiduguri. There are eight. And there are two state psychiatric hospitals that are known to me now. That's the one uh, on those state psychiatric hospitals. And I know that Kebi State also have one state psychiatric hospital. Then there are, we have a lot of federal medical centers that teach it, that has department of psychiatry. We have a lot of teaching hospitals that have department of psychiatry. So they are easily available. Statistics has it that about 20% of those who are mental illness are the ones that we see in the hospitals. Over 80% of them, they are in churches, they are in healing or where they are tied down, where they are in one abalis or where they are tied down. And they said they are also providing service, but we cannot really prove the efficacy of the kind of services that they are offering there. I remember there was this client that my senior colleague was handling then, back then, uh, when I was in Aro. In Daro is a psychiatric hospital in Abe Okuta. And on this particular day, he went, he, he was meeting with this client. So they brought the lady to him in the office and they were discussing. So he was having a therapy section with the lady. The lady wasn't talking all along, all along. But when the lady decided to talk, the lady asked, would you also sleep with me? You, you were surprised. This is a lady that was brought from Abalist. So in the course of interrogating the lady, we discovered that she has been violated severally from all these places that they are taking her to for treatment. But I can assure everyone that if you take your word that is having one mental health challenge or the other to a government recognized hospital or any center facility that is titled hospital with professional there, they will not violate your clients. They will not violate your patient. Just knowing that there are people who don't even have an idea of what mental health is sometimes just reminds me like that we still have a lot of work to do in terms of education. People need to be, and they need to be taught in, in their own language. Whenever I think of talking about it, you know how you go to the market and you see these like speakers everywhere. Since Nigeria, Lagos has no noise um, rules and regulations, you might as well add your voice there for making something valuable. So I was just thinking that maybe I'll just get someone to record mental health in Pidgin and Yoruba because those are the two languages that I know people um, respond to. And then maybe even someone can do the accent of, there's a particular guy, I don't know if he's the one that does it for everybody, but he talks about like um, physical health stuff. I don't know if you go to the market a lot. He's like, uh, wear your body, uh, discharge, they come out, put up, make you the uh, hair, try dumb things on the, the. That man, he's, he's, I don't even know who he is, but I hear his voice or maybe his style of um, speaking almost everywhere. Any market I go to and someone is talking about local drugs, it's usually his voice. So I'll probably get someone that can mimic that same voice and just put it out so people can understand like mental health is real. So what's next? It all comes down to issues of sustainability, putting round pegs in round holes rather than putting square pegs in round holes. That's where the, that has, it's a bin. It has been the problem of Nigeria for ages. People that are not qualified are put in positions where they cannot function. And therefore, they not, nothing moves until you move it. The government and the people, and when I say the people, I'm talking about the citizens. They are both core stakeholders. All of us need to accept that climate change is real. And the second thing, we need to understand that there's need for education. 
on climate change. And the last thing is our government should be accountable when it comes to issue of environment. And with that, we'll be able to understand that our environmental problem will be solved, not instantly, but we take its steps before it gets to uh, that kind of solution. So I urge the government to actually look into uh, partnership with stakeholders to get solutions to environmental problems in Nigeria.